six months. Nomadic travel. January 2022 to June of 2022. It has been crazy, guys. I'm just loading up the podcast. I'm going to get a new episode cranking on here. And, uh, oops, hold on, back up. Wow. All right, what is going on, guys? Thank you for tuning in. Um, what's going on YouTube? What is going on podcast listeners? Um, today, we are making a very special return. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about the six months of this year. The first six months, I have been living completely nomadically, traveling down through Central America, starting in Miami, beginning to, you know of this year. I left Miami after living there for almost a year and a half, and um, I began li living nomadically. And in this video, I want to be telling you guys the pros and the cons, what to expect, and some suggestions that I have if you guys are considering doing this yourself. Okay, so let's jump right in. Um, first, I want to give you guys a little overview of kind of where I went, what I did, and uh, then I'll, I'll talk about the pros and why I love living this lifestyle and why I think you should definitely consider it. And then I'm going to end the video with the cons and um, some snippets if you guys are just getting started uh, in entrepreneurship and you want to scale your business to the point where you can make enough money to do this lifestyle, how I would go about doing that. So stick around to the end. Highly recommend. Okay. So. Uh, like I said, I've been living. I was living in Miami the past almost two years since. Actually, no, not two years. A year and a half ish, a little over a year. And um, yeah, I just moved down there because there was no income tax. I wanted to be around the nice weather and the COVID restrictions and everything. And after a while, I just got like this built up pressure where I was like, I just want another adventure. And I went for a walk one day. Um, the same walking trail I took every day, twice a day, and i um, feeling this little pent up energy, like, gosh, I just feel like, you know, and um, I literally was like, you know what, maybe I should just leave Miami and go to start traveling again. And as soon as I said that, a huge heron flies right in front of me, like five feet in front of me, lands like right in the grass and then goes into the little creek, like right next to um, where I was walking. And fun fact, the past like three years, I looked at the heron as like my little spirit guide. And whenever I see a heron, I take it as a little omen, like, okay, I'm on the right track. So I was like shocked because I had walked that trail twice a day for the past year or six months, whatever long I was at the Ameline, eight months. And I had never seen a heron. And then boom, all of a sudden, one just flew in when I said that. I was like, okay, I gotta go, I gotta go. So I had met some people online. I've met a couple uh, people online that I was planning on meeting up with. Um, and I just, I think it was after Christmas. Yeah, yeah, after Christmas, it was December 29th of 2021. I just flew to Mexico. I went to Playa del Carmen. And uh, then I went to San Cristobal de las Casas. Then I went to uh, Guatemala, and I was also traveling uh, with my girlfriend, Diana. And we went all the way through Guatemala, Belize. Where did we go? We went to, after Belize, we went to Costa Rica. We went all those countries, and it was crazy. And we brought, the longest stay we had was in, was in Grifo Alto, in Costa Rica. We, we stayed there only like a month at a time. All the other places, we only stayed there for like two or three weeks and then we'd move to the next spot. And it was absolutely amazing. Incredible memories. We got to hike a volcano, um, got to go scuba diving in Belize, which was amazing, probably the top experience of the whole trip. And water, uh, watermelon. The volcano in, in Guatemala was freaking crazy. Antigua, Guatemala, highly recommend. One of my top places. And then, yeah, Costa Rica, obviously, which was beautiful and still one of my favorite countries to visit. So we stayed there for like probably one or two months. 
And then, uh, yeah, I decided to come back home actually at my dad's house right now. I'll probably be here for like another few weeks, maybe a month. And then uh, I'll be heading to Europe soon to conduct the Greece trip. So if you guys are an Amazon seller or an international world traveler, digital nomad, any of those things, and you want to connect with like-minded individuals, check out www.taylorjonesexperiences.com in the description down below, and you can book the uh, Greece travel experience September 8th to the 13th. We have like four spots left, okay? So it has been a crazy six months, and it's really cool to be back here. So let's go over the pros and the cons. The pros are... For me, when I'm traveling internationally, I'm just so inspired. I love meeting new people. Like, obviously, it's pretty epic. Let's get into the cons really quickly. The cons of nomadic travel, like moving so quickly from place to place, are that you spend a lot of extra money and energy, mental energy and just attention, finding out where you're going to eat, where you're going to stay, what hotel are we going to stay at, what Airbnb are we going to stay at, what about this, what about this. There's so many more decisions that you have to make as a nomad that you don't have to make when you are in a single location and you have a home base. Like it's so nice to be here, have my ring light set up, have my, 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 my shipping set up, have my podcast set up. And I wake up, I work out, I'm getting into a routine and you can just sit down and plug into this environment. You know, in our environment, which includes the place that we're at, but also the people that we have and around us, is we know from my other content is heavily influences who we are becoming and who we are. So this was probably the most difficult part about nomadic travel is that it was much more difficult to lock into a really steady routine and a lot of the content creation routine that I had kind of fell off. I was making TikToks here and there, um, but it, uh, it really fell off. Uh, I was still sourcing content. That was a lot. I found that to be a lot easier, excuse me, sourcing inventory. I found that to be a lot of an easier task to stay up to date with. But yeah, the content creation really was difficult to keep that going. So I think that was probably the most difficult, the amount of mental energy that it takes um, doing all those things. I strongly recommend if you're a, biz a new business owner, waiting until your business is really systematized and automated to where you're doing, you've mastered everything and then delegated as much as possible before you before you go off, okay? So then, okay, now you may be asking, Taylor, well, I want to travel nomadically. How can I get started? And here's my answer to that. First, isolate all of your responsibilities on a day-to-day -day basis. What do you need to do? Do you have a job? Do you have a dog or a cat? Do you have any children? Write down a list of all of the things that you are responsible for. Then make another list of all of the bills that you have. Car insurance, rent, phone bill. Go through all these. Two things you'll have to do. First, you're gonna to have to go through all the responsibilities and either get someone to cover the responsibilities that can be delegated and then try to eliminate as many of those as possible. Because the last thing you wanna do is take a, you know, a vagabond trip to Europe and then have to come home after three weeks because your dog misses you, right? Or something, maybe take your dog with you. Or, you know, like come up with some solutions to the responsibilities and the bills. So after you do that with the responsibilities, the next thing to do is go through all your bills and try to eliminate as much of the bills as possible. For example, if you're gonna be in Europe for six months in Asia, vagabonding, you don't really need car insurance. You know, you can probably get rid of your car insurance. You probably can see if you can get out of your lease and pause your rent or, you know, pause your renters and like get rid of as many of the bills as possible too. Only pay for what you absolutely need to. Maybe it's just your business expenses. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, when I left to, from when I left Miami and I went to Central America and worked my way down Mexico, I got rid of my car insurance, which was $400 like a month. I got rid of my my rent payment, which was $1,200 a month. Um, I still had to pay my car payment. but um, And then my rental insurance, which was $50 a month. And I think a couple other things, you know. So get rid of as, as much of your location dependent bills as possible and then make a plan you know make a plan 
and make sure that you have your income is not going to be dramatically affected by the switch to a nomad lifestyle. But if you can do all those things, then I highly recommend it because it also, but no, it is not for everyone. And don't know who you are, know what kind of personality type you are. Some people are way much more bigger planners than other people. Some people are, you know, need to stay in one spot for at least a month. Some people want to see as many places as possible. I would say my advice is pace yourself. Spend at least one to two weeks, preferably two weeks in a spot. I found that to be my sweet spot. If I tried to go less than two weeks while working, you know, that's too much. You know, if you don't have to work and you're taking like three months off, you can probably squeeze that down to three to five days in a spot. I would recommend going less than that because then you're spending more of your time traveling and less time actually enjoying where you are. So those are my recommendations. And then my final recommendations for anybody that is looking to live nomadically and quit your job and take back your, your time in your life. Here's would be my advice. Okay. In life, in America, we are, it's all business, right? It's all corporations. And you either have a job or you have a business. Or you're unemployed. That business that you work for is making money. And you help that business make money. Either by running its operations or getting its sales. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to set aside one to three months of your time. Replacing that $60,000 salary with your own business. Which includes either a product or a service. And what that looks like in all the internet money. If it's a product. It's either a Shopify store where you're selling something that you're passionate about and you're building a brand, maybe like a soap brand or something, or you're reselling other people's items, like as an Amazon FBA seller, like I do. The other thing you can do is you can do a service. You can be a coach. You can be a agency and sell marketing services or, you know, consulting services. So here's what I would do if I were you. I would write down a list of all the skills that you're really, really good at. At, are you good at advertising? Are you good at coaching? Are you good at teaching? Are you good at Facebook ads? Make a list of all your skills and say, okay, what am I really, really good at? And if you're really, really, really good at one or two things, try to see what the intersection of those things, those, those things are and see if you can sell a service around that. Okay. And, um, and brand yourself, start making social media content, make a landing page, invest in some marketing and work on getting your first client. Promise a money back guarantee and go from there. That's what I did. You know, when I first got started, I was working at Xerox and I was like, okay, I need to start selling stuff online. So I made a $1 course about how to sell stuff on Amazon. Got no sales the first two months. I also started selling stuff on Amazon and scaled that up to $30,000 a month in the first three months. With only cash, I had like seven thousand dollars in credit, personal credit cards I was using, and then scaled the courses. I scaled the credit in the Amazon, and then I was offering coaching. A lot of my TikToks went viral, and I was offering one-on-one -on -one coaching for like a thousand bucks, and then two thousand, and then three thousand. You know, and basically all of those streams of income allowed me to leave my Xerox. I was actually making more money with course, courses, coaching, and Amazon than I was um, at Xerox. You know, so that's the cool thing about being an entrepreneur, about being a digital nomad, is you can very quickly make more money, okay, doing your entrepreneurship hustles than you can your salary, okay? Depending on how much money you make at your salary, that might vary. But um, an entrepreneur has no limit. I mean, you could, you could scale to a $10 million coaching business if you hire 10 coaches and you have a great product and service with great reviews when a great market, you know? So all things to consider. Um, hope you guys enjoyed today's episodes. If you had any comments, um, questions, you want to work with me with you know Amazon coaching, you guys want to come to the Greece trip, anything, let me know down below. And until next time, Taylor Jones Official, out.